morning class so in today's algebra lecture we are going to see a very interesting topic that is about the viruses as this is a corona pandemic situation and because of that we have to study online everything so basic cause behind of this is that virus so actually uh, behind this whole pandemic situation the virus we are dealing with is a corona virus so knowing about the virus is like a condition in today's world that we have to know what kind of pathogen what kind of thing which can make us vulnerable so that's why we have to see in this lecture i will going to explain you what is the meaning of virus what are the features in virus and how they can reproduce or how they can make numbers of their copy just by having a small amount but inside our body they used us as a host and make a uh, multiple copies out of one single reply so we were going to see about the virus. so the first introduction part of we see here what is the meaning of virus actually virus uh, sometimes they cannot be uh, you know think as a living or dead cell they are just in between some they are neither living neither dead so uh, or you can say if we want to put them in what kind of form they are present like they are are they living form or are they dead form or non living so basically we cannot put them inside any kind of a specific zone because that is their nature they are very specific they are very special in some features so that's why because uh, most of the time they just live in a like a non living situation but as they just got their host they can be replicate and they can be living virus that uh, word is from latin word and uh, venus meaning of latin is a venom that is for the poison and food the having some toxics inside them the so poison we know that the thing which can make us harm so we can call them the poisons so basically venom is a poisonous fluid in the meaning of latin that is the meaning of virus but uh, not all the virus they are very deadly but some of uh, having some special other use also so our simplest form of life but if, if we see them their life they are living their cell they are having very simplest form means they do not have very complicated in their structure like us like plants like other organisms we have a proper organogenesis we have the organs we have a special physiology everything we are just specific to everywhere but not virus not like us they are just having a single cell and they work on it up to their entire life or mostly the virus just have two things one there is genetic material and one a cover or a protein that is called capsid so their study has provide a great deal of information about us but basically they are if we call them we cannot call them a cell because uh, having or being a cell some special or not even special some basic features have to be there basic feature like the cell wall or cell membrane nucleus and cytoplasm so these are the thing which uh, a normal cell possesses but in the case of virus these things are absent so simply we cannot call them any kind of cell but their study has provided a great deal in information about cell but what happened when we wanted to see how the virus work they are uh, studying virus that provide us a way more opportunity to know more about cells so study of viruses is a branch of biology that is called the virology so if we are talking like every branch have their different meaning like we are talking about zoology so zoology is a study of animals what me that is a study of plants and if we talk about microbiology study about microorganisms so every uh, study have their era so say do the virology virology deal with the study of viruses now virus are the cellular parasites if we see that how they live their life so they are a cellular parasite they live inside the cell cell this is not their own cell they live inside a host organism and that is a cell 
So they're smaller than bacteria and have much more simplified organization. So basically, we see their size. So bacteria are very small. Even you cannot uh, see the bacteria by your naked eyes. And if we talk about the virus, they are more small as even comparison to the bacteria. The virus are very tiny in temperature. They can be, you know, passed through any uh, layer which can uh, stop the bacteria, but they cannot even stop the virus. And this is why virus has been identified. Now we will going to see the nature of the virus. How or what are the important characteristic of the virus? So virus are infective microorganism. That is the first very important information about the virus that they can cause infection. Infection which can be led to any kind of disease inside our body. So they show several differences from the typical bacterial cell, like their size. On the whole virus are much smaller than the bacteria most animal and plant viruses they are invisible under the light microscope and some small size are only 200 armstrong in that so you can see how small they are so they are very small even under most of the like uh, normal light microscope so we can see the tiny but inside the light microscope, we are not even able to analyze the size of the virus because they are small as like they just can have the 200 angstrom in diameter, their shape, their spherical shape. So just the 200 angstrom, that is a very small unit. Even light microscope cannot analyze them. No independent metabolism. Like every body, every organism, we have our own type of metabolism. Metabolism is a thing which helps us to utilize our food material or convert them into the energy. So basically, with the viruses, they do not have any kind of metabolism. They cannot multiply outside a living cell, even if they are present on a surface and they are not present inside a living cell. They cannot even multiply, they cannot even do reproduction or they cannot do anything. They are just, at that time, we can call them a dead species because at that time they cannot create any kind of infection. They can even not do their own survival. They, can, they cannot do anything. So that's why we cannot put them into a living or the dead because when we they are going inside a living cell they will start doing everything so they are very unpredictable you know uh, reason behind uh, this is, is still uh, unknown that uh, the thing the virus cannot do by their own why the nature made them like this because uh, i think that's better for us if they can replicate by their own and if they do not need any kind of uh, living being, then they will be more dangerous. So that's why because of this poisonous thing, they had not all the facility they should be for their own survival. So that's why they depend on others. No virus has been cultivated in a cell-free medium. Okay, So never, we cannot cultivate like the bacteria culture we can do on a garden or any uh, media we can culture the bacteria but if we're talking about virus we cannot culture virus just directly inside the media we had to culture them inside a cell or inside a living cell virus do not have an independent metabolism so we already see that that they do not have any kind of independent metabolism they are metabolically inactive outside the host cell because they do not possess any enzyme system, protein synthesis machinery. So the basic thing which we needed for any kind of metabolism, that is some kind of enzyme system or protein synthesis machinery, but they do not have these kind of luxury. So that's why they cannot multiply and they need someone who going to take them inside and then only they can go to multiply. Thus, viruses are obligatory intracellular parasites. So, they are the intracellular parasite, and that is the their, you know, can say this is their destiny that they cannot uh, do anything without the cells. So, that's why they are obligate 
computer cell or fan cell. Now, if we are talking about the structure of virus, so that is very simple structure. You don't have to remember so much about the viral structure. It just consists of two things. Two things will be there. First, the nucleic acid core, centrally placed nucleic acid, and that's surrounded by a protein coat. So two things are there, nucleic acid core, and that has to be surrounded by a protein coat. So very simple to remember the structure of the virus. In this respect, they differ from typical cell, which are made up of protein, carbohydrates, lipid, nucleic acid. So by seeing their structure, by seeing their organization, we can easily say that they are way more different from the normal cell. Because normal cell made up of the protein, carbohydrate, lipid, nucleic acid, and they do not made up of uh, these things. Mycovirus, they have a membranous envelope consisting of proteins, carbohydrate, lipid, outside the usual protein coat, but this envelope is derived from the host cell. So some the virus which are called mycovirus, they have the membranous envelope. And how they got this membranous envelope? Envelope, they got it from the host cell. This is not their own. They cannot synthesize it by own. They got it from the host. Cell. Absence of cellular structure. So, virus do not have any cytoplasm and the cytoplasmic organelle like mitochondria, Golgi, ribosome, lysosome. So, basically, any if they do not have cytoplasm, how will they are going to have cellular or cytoplasmic organelles? So, they do not have any kind of uh, cytoplasmic organelles like the normal cell have mitochondria, Golgi complexes ribosomes, lysosomes, they are absent inside the normal viral structure. Also, they do not have a limiting cell membrane. Cell membrane is like a crucial structure inside the cell. Because if you don't have much inside the cytoplasm, but still you have the cell membrane to cover your cell, to give you a shape, but in the viral structure, we do not even have a membrane. So that's why the complete uh, cellular structure is absent. Not even the fundamental things are present here. Nucleic acid, that is the thing is that is present inside the virus. So virus usually have only one nucleic acid, okay? So they do not have both the kind of nucleic acid, like uh, ribos oh, sorry, RNA and DNA. They either can be DNA, so they just have only DNA or they can be have just the RNA. Typical cell have both DNA and RNA. What happened in the normal cellular structure? We will be having both the things. Both the things like uh, we will be having DNA. In addition, we are going to have RNA also. But here in the viruses, they have to choose which one they got not to choose, they got in the heretical structure, either it can be RNA or DNA. Draw sarcoma virus, RSV, producing certain cancer is the only virus having both DNA and RNA. But always there is exception. And the exception is here, that is RSV. So just remember this exception, because it is only single one. So sometimes most in the thing that uh, question can be asked, uh, RSV virus, so people get confused because they know normal is a study of the virus say that they can use their hybrid DNA or RNA. In that case, if the multiple choice question have this RSV and they are asking about the both the thing of DNA or RNA, most of the people going to deny it. But you have to remember this is a one single, normally you can say this is a one single exception in the case of presence of both the kind of DNA and RNA. Now, crystallization. So many of the smaller viruses can be crystallized. So crystallization means uh, we can make it up in a form of crystal. So yes, many of the smaller viruses, they can be crystallized and thus behave like chemicals. So when we do the crystallization of the virus, they can behave like the chemicals. We can use it, we can store it, we can 
like uh, chemicals what chemicals do just change someone's chemical nature so saying the after crystallizing the uh, viruses we can make them to do something something like that viruses do not have the power of growth and division so we know that that outside a living host they don't have any kind of power for the growth and division the genetic material of virus we produce only in a host cell look everything even it is for application even for any work inside anything they need energy to do that if the virus do not get the energy so they will never going to reproduce and their basic structure does not have a luxury to produce energy or you can say they are not enough to produce the energy material and uh, they do not have anything which can uh, suck up the energy so that's why only inside the host cell host cell is like a, a power house to them like in a cell mitochondria is a power house giving it heat for viruses a cell is working like the powerhouse they are going to give them the all the thing which is required for the replication because also cell is replicating and how the cell is replicating by having their own kind of materials inside them so the same material now going to help the virus for making the replication or growing them. this virus do not show show all the characteristic of typical living organism they however possess two fundamental characteristic of living system so basically in if we see the overall characteristic of the virus so they do not show any kind of fundamental characteristic of a living system what they show just the two characteristic one is a nucleic acid as their genetic material and second one is a little protein that is associated with that capsomere so the nucleic acid contain all the instruction for the structure and function of the virus so basically this genetic material that present is there that is a key for them for having all the information about their structure and their function if they are still very small they cannot do anything their own but in the host cell they have going to have a attain a structure also and they can also going to do the functions so for knowing their structure and function what the thing we can analyze we can analyze their genetic material by seeing their genetic material we can going to be able to analyze what kind of virus it is so they can produce themselves even if only by using a host cell synthesis machinery so host cell synthesis machinery as we are talking about like if they wanted to make the proteins what the thing they are going to need they are going to need ribosomes of the host cell so these are the thing which going to help our viruses to make their own function or to do their own function now we will going to see the structure of virus on the basis of the size and the symmetry so on the basis of the size and symmetry they are variable size like variable most virus are much smaller than bacteria the size ranges in between the 100 angstrom to 250 micrometer so that is very small uh, size for a virus so some viruses are larger than bacteria but some exceptions always present so some viruses they are larger than the bacteria like the example is the pistacus virus this pistacus virus is 0.75 mu in their diameter so that's why they have a little more you know hope for having the larger size but that is rare not uh, most of the virus they are small and a small even uh, in comparison to the bacteria now if we are talking about the symmetries virus occurs in three main shapes okay on the basis of their symmetry the spherical cubical or polyhedral in the spherical we will be having the cubical or polyhedral second one is a helical cylindrical or rod like helical will be like cylinder or rod like third one is complex in this they are going to have a, a complex structure sometimes they can be the combination of spherical and helical so the cubical virus may be tetrahedral 
So if we talk about the spherical and in the spherical, if we talk about the cubical, they can be the tetrahedral. Tetrahedral means four faces. To the dodendrohedral, to the 12 faces. The minimum uh, faces that has to be present in the cubical, that is the four faces. And the maximum that can be the 12 faces. Or isohedral, and that is rare, but it can be. Isohydral uh, that is having the 20 faces. So you can see they are having a lot of faces. And these faces also plays an important role what function they are going to do inside the host cell. The herpes virus is dodecandral. Dodecandral uh, means they are having the 12 faces. The tobacco mosaic virus and the bacteriophage are respectively helical and complex. So basically tobacco uh, mosaic TMB that is helical in shape. Okay, so that is like a literal cylindrical and rod like. But the bacteriophage they are complex. So as we talking the complex that can be the combination of both. There are some examples of all the shapes, the spherical. Pill X174, herpes virus, tipula virus, polyoma virus, they are the type of the spherical viruses. Helical here we can see tobacco mosaic virus, influenza virus, mumps virus, they can be come into the helical. Compound vaccine virus, ORF virus, vesicular stomatitis virus, and also the bacteriophage, they come under the complex virus. So these are the type or these are the things which we can got on a different structural analysis. You can see the shape here. This is a herpes virus. Okay, you can see how many faces they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 faces. That is a lot. The Pula virus, polyoma virus. So these are the kind of the spherical viruses. And this is our tobacco mosaic virus. And that is like the hulk rod like or cylinder like. TMB also, you can see here. Okay, so TMB is like if this is a enlarged version, but if you see TMB, Inside the microscope, so we can going to have this kind of a structure that is a long elongated rod like structure. Vaccina also, Viscala stomata, and Bacteriophage, they come in the, under the complex kind of viruses. Okay, next we will be going to see morphology. So, morphology, if we are talking about here, so morphology. A virus is a pore of nucleic acid, DNA or RNA. So basically they can be having the DNA or they can be having the RNA. That depend on the morphology and that will be surrounded by a protein shell. So this is a normal structure. An intact virus unit is known as a viron. So basically this uh, total combination of the nucleic acid and the uh, uh, protein that is the intact virus unit and this is known as a viron. So the protein called the protein coat which is covering this nucleic content that is called a capsid. And the capsid is composed of number of the subunit of a particular shape and these subunit are known as capsule. So basically this uh, protein which is covering the nucleic acid if it is present in a single unit, we can going to call them the capsule. But if they are composed of the subunits and total, these subunits are known as the capsule, in which or they are the building blocks of the capsid. Total protein coat capsid, and which is going to make the capsid that is called the capsule. The capsid protect the nucleic acid and uh, nucleic acid against the action of nuclease enzyme and some proteins of a capsid help in binding the virus to a surface of host cell. So what is the function of the capsid if we see here? Capsid protect the nucleic acid first against the action of nuclease enzyme. So nuclease enzyme basically uh, do the function for the breakdown. 
so that's why this uh, thing can be stopped by the, having the capsid some protein of the capsid help in binding the virus to the surface of the host cell so uh, this is the destiny of a virus to live inside a host cell so when they go to the host cell this uh, capsomere they help them to stick to the host cell some surface protein the virus of the surface of the host cell some surface protein act as enzyme and dissolve the surface layer of the host cell and thus help in penetration of the nucleic acid into the host cell so uh, these whole thing attaching to the surface of the host cell penetration inside the host cell and uh, saving from the host cell nucleus and shine that whole work has to be done by the capsule so you can just say that uh, in this two thing of the virus one is a nucleic acid and second is here the uh, this uh, capsule nucleic acid is a brain like situation okay there's our brain and we are having the skull which protect our brain so basically this is the same structure like that that the uh, viron their nucleus that uh, genetic material that is a form of information and the capsomere are the protective zone this the structure you can see here inside this is a nucleic acid core and these are the capsomere they present surrounded the nucleic acid core so what is the economic importance of the virus so economic importance if you see here so virus are used in preparation of sera and vaccine to be used against diseases like tb and polio so the major function of their economic importance is that they can be used to fight the disease in the form of vaccines multiplication of virus in bacterial cell is also utilized in the production of antibiotics so also in when we culture the viruses inside the bacterial cell we can also use them for the production of antibiotics due to simplicity of the structure and rapid multiplication they are widely used in research so actually they are very simple and they can replicate very fast so if you wanted to do some research and see the immediate effects we can use the viruses because they are having a very simplest structure and very high rate of their replication so in the field of molecular biology medicine and genetic engineering we can use the virus at a very high rate because they are easy to handle in the labs virus may be used by human in eradicating the harmful pest insect and the control the population of organism they are used as a form of biological like uh, around all the bacteria they are not good some also have some pathogenicity inside them so basically to save uh, us from those bacteria viruses can help us viruses some of the viruses which can kill bacteria which can eat bacteria like the bacterium fast they can be used in a form of biological control virus cause dreadful disease in a crop plant domesticated animals and man so they can even cause so many diseases not only in humans they can be uh, introduce the uh, disease in the crops plant animals and men bacteria first attack the nitrogen fixing bacteria of soil and are responsible for reducing fertility of the soil so not uh, the thing which we studied up till now about the viruses that was a type of application but not always they are so applicable sometimes they can sometimes not most of the time they can cause diseases and bad things to us like in the by attacking the nitrogen fixation bacteria what they are doing they are reducing the fertility of soil this is a uh, uh, next uh, portion we are going to see we will be see it uh, briefly in this lecture because in the next lecture we will be going to see it in much elaborated form so the reproduction if we see here that is a replication cycle so bacteria fast exhibit two type of replication cycles virulent or lactic cycle and temperate or lysogenic cycle so these are the two cycle which are responsible for the reproduction and replication inside the virus 
you can see it in a diagrammatic form it's a heterozygous life cycle like this is a e coli actually e coli is used here e coli is a vac cell it's a bacterial cell and it is used here for replicating the viruses so uh, in the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle one cycle is just for making the attachment here you can see this lysogenic cycle okay the this is a virus they are going to a e coli cell and first pattern is just for their to absorption after absorption they go into the inside first uh, uh, absorption they just inject the fast dna okay the dna which is present inside them they are going to inject inside it now the prophase interrogated phase dna they will be going to hybridize hybridizing the Uh, DNA which come from the virus and the E. coli DNA. Now they are having this uh, DNA inside them. They had been take over here and start doing the protein synthesis, which is governed by the code of the viruses. Now they are going to make their uh, protein subunit, protein cells, capsid, capsomere formation. They start doing that, and after having this whole capsomere formation. they were going to make multiple number of copies by dividing their genetic material and also simultaneously forming the capsomere production inside the body so this thing that is going to help the viruses so they can multiply and they can replicate after when they are having this whole so many situation inside them they are going to burst out so virulent uh, virulent or lytic cycle the phase undergoing lytic cycle are called lytic phase or virulent phase it like the t series of the bacteriophage in lytic cycle a lytic phase infected and they kill the host cell to release progeny viral so this uh, whole process that is going to involve this following step absorption or infection viral assembly penetration or injection lysis or release synthesis of fast component so there will be the step which going to be follow in the lytic cycle like first they are going to absorb create infection making their viral assembly penetrate or injection lysis or release and synthetic and synthesis of fast component so in the absorption they just have to like uh, collision between the t phase viral and a susceptible host cell so in which they needed to attach with a host cell in this case we use a cell that is e coli this process of attachment of a viral on the host cell surface is called adsorption it is not called absorption it is called adsorption they are just attaching on the host surface the viral receptor may be f pili lipoprotein or iron transport protein the t phase viral adsorb the specific receptor by the tip of tail fiber like the for example for the t4 t7 polyphase by to the lipo polysaccharides step 2 that is the penetration so in this they will be going inside or their uh, genetic material that is going to be released inside the e coli and after that e coli they are going to make the infection or creating the infection or the remaining thing that the just capsomere which just remain on the surface that is called the host or dog actually uh, because they do not have their soul left uh, inside them so their soul is left out to make a more more copies so that's why that has been called the host synthesis of first component immediate after penetration the fast dna synthesizes early protein so what their major function as soon as they go inside the very first thing they are going to do there to make their protein and take over the control of the bacterial cell machinery so this is the very importantly first function that is to be done inside the synthesis of fast component the application of fast dna the newly synthesized fast dna product clade protein which are for the protein subunit of the fast capsid head and the tail so now 
In the newly synthesized fast DNA, they will going to produce protein which is going to make the cover on around that viron. Now the viron assembly, so now this genome and capsomere, they will going to be one as a viron. So the capsid protein assembled to form empty hair and a condensed viral DNA is packed inside it. Finally, the separate assembly tail joined to the hair to form a daughter of progeny viron. So now we are having, uh, you know, all complete set of uh, the virus with their progenies. Now what we have to do the next step that is for the lysis. So during assembly of progeny virus, the bacterial cell becomes spherical. So here cell will be going to become spherical. Pass enzyme weaken the cell wall, which ultimately burst or lies to release 100 to 1200 progeny virus. So in the lysis, the thing happened, the bursting out of the host cell. And the bursting out of the host cell lead to the release of the viron assembly that has been present inside, that has been grown inside. So second, there's a temperate or lysogenic cycle after the slices. The phase that exhibit lysogenic cycle are called temperate phase or non virulent phase. So in this, they just present inside, but they do not create any kind of, you know, infection. So during lysogenic cycle, the false DNA integrate into the bacterial DNA and now cell called as a prophase. So when the DNA, uh, when the false DNA, when it integrate into the bacterial DNA, that particular stage is called the prophase. So the host bacterium containing prophase is called lysogenic bacterium or lysogen. So inside in which we are containing all these things, they will be called as a lysogenic bacterium or lysogen. When a lysogenic bacterium is exposed to UV light or a chemical, the prophase withdrawn from the host DNA to undergo lytic cycle. And the conversion of the prophase into a lytic phase is called induction. So basically, when a UV light or anything which induces that prophase to convert into the lytic phase, and that when they are going to convert from a lysogenic to a lytic phase, that process is known as the induction process. This is a viron. Viron is a, actually a complete set of the viral particle consisting RNA, DNA, and surrounded by a cell capsid and constituting the infective form of the virus. So in the form of viron, they can create infections. So this is a kind of the dangerous form of the viron. All the thing is related or according to the virus here, capsomere, or they are having a host cell they have their genetic material to perform all the work. So all virons have genomic nuclei. This may be the RNA or the DNA. That depend on what kind of uh, virus it is, is, but they will be having this one kind of nucleic acid in them. It can be DNA or it can be RNA. Virusoids, they are the circular standard RNA depend on the plant virus for their replication and encapsulation. So this genome of virocyte consists of a several hundred nucleotide and only encode uh, structural protein. So the virocyte are similar to the viroid in size, structure, and mean of replication. But virocyte, while being studied in virology, are not considered as virus, but as sub particle. So basically, they are also a subcategory of the virus. They are not exactly the virus, but yes, they have the component analysis, which can be match with the viruses. Prion also, this is also infectious, the infectious protein which has been made by the viron assembly or the virus without having a nucleic acid, okay? Any kind of infectious protein, but the condition, they do not have their nucleic acid inside them, but they can create a disease or degenerate disease of the nervous system. Anything, the harm they can make that Thing can be called as the prion. So prion are said to be the border zone between the non-living and living things because they have no need of metabolize or capacity to reproduce, but they are capable of replication with the body of a human or some animals. So individually prions they do not have any kind of their own survival thing like the virus, but they have the protein which when we they are going to present inside the human. For the reverse transcriptase, they will going to make the 
your own assemblies itself. Pyroid we already studied. So pyroids basically they are believed to cause disease by interfering in the host cell gene regulation and they are destructive to many important commercial plants like the potato, coca, crumstemum. So actually they are the diseasing agent inside the plant body. So that's why they are not good for most of the plants and they can cause disease inside the plant. So this is all about the virus, how, how they can reproduce, what are their structure, what are their important features, and uh, how they can produce inside the lysogenic and lytic cycle. But still, you have some confusion. You can go through these uh, references and clear your doubts and even ask me if you have any confusion. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you, class.